Yeah, so thank you again. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, I will be presenting to you uh, the, the strategies and the measures adopted by the Philippine Ports Authority in dealing with the challenges uh, that have been, uh, we have been facing for the last six months. So please allow me to give a quick background of my uh, organization. So the Philippine Ports Authority is a government instrumentality with um, corporate powers. It has jurisdiction over a majority of all ports uh, in the country. It has uh, concession agreements with private port terminal operators for the operation of uh, international ports uh, in Manila. There are two in Manila, the Manila International Container Terminal and the Manila South, ha South Harbor. Uh, we also have a concessionaire um, in the Port of Batangas, the Batangas Container Terminal. The country's premier domestic uh, port, which is the Manila North Harbor, is also under a concession agreement valid for uh, 25 years. For other ports under the management of PPA, it has uh, existing service agreements with private service providers such as cargo handling operators or passenger terminal building operators. Uh, it is a challenge, uh, it was a challenge and it's still a challenge uh, to keep the ports open and operational 24-7 because of the containment measures and prolonged lockdowns in place, we, which restricted the movements of uh, people as well as goods to and from the port. We were forced or were pushed to work from home. However, our organization is not structured for telework or telecommute. And uh, the connectivity, um, hardware, and technology are additional constraints for us to really um, fully discharge our functions. And we also have to deal with health protocols, which have been uh, changing uh, from um, month to month or even uh, from week to week. And we also have to um, deal with port congestion because um, it is, uh, it, is our, uh, it is a challenge to, to keep the uninterrupted flow of goods moving in and out of the ports because in Manila, um, the, the ports were congested as early as last uh, March, uh, brought about by overstaying cargoes uh, even before the, the pandemic. And uh, this was aggravated by the fact that um, withdrawals of containers are very limited due to the uh, lockdowns and uh, containments. And in April, uh, cruise ships lined up at the Manila Bay waiting for the government's uh, green light to proceed with the repatriation. Um, and we have to make available the services needed for this uh, cruise ships. And um, how did we cope up and how are we coping up with, with these challenges? Um, as cliche it may, may, it may sound, uh, Necessity really is the mother of all uh, inventions, uh, as mentioned earlier by Mr. Gupal. So what are the measures that we have adopted to ensure, uh, to ensure that uh, we're able to deal with these challenges? Policy interventions and collaborations were indispensable since uh, existing rules were not um, crafted to address uh, this novel situation before us. We have to have new ones, we have to revise the existing ones, and we have to do it very quickly. So these are some of the policy interventions and collaborations that we have adopted. The first one would be on uh, the release of refrigerated containers and dry ones, which has to be uh, expedited with the issuance of guidelines jointly with the Bureau of Customs, um, the PPA, the Department of Trade, the Bureau of um, Customs, the, in, in fact, even the Department of Finance um, was involved with the main objective of free up, 
freeing up space in container yards to accommodate the arrival of cargoes uh, con containing food items, medicines, and protective equipment for the use of the frontliners. The, the basic features of this um, policy is that overstaying cargoes that, be, that uh, remain in the port beyond 30 days from discharge are required to be withdrawn within five days from the issuance of, that's of that order and otherwise cargoes will be considered as abandoned. Um, processing time also were um, given to arriving cargoes of particularly uh, essential uh, goods like medicine, medical, and basic necessities. So containers um, scheduled to arrive after the issuance of the order uh, must be withdrawn within 10 days from the discharge. Again, otherwise uh, they shall be declared abandoned. Overstaying cargoes will likewise um, authorized to be transferred from the Manila International Container Terminal to the domestic uh, port, which is the Manila North Harbor. Uh, all, again, for the purpose of uh, freeing up air capacity at the Manila International Container Terminal. Um, as of, um, under this measure, a total of approximately 10,000 TEUs were temporarily transferred to Man the Manila North Harbor to Inland Container Depot and also in dry ports outside uh, Metro Manila. So Green Lane was also established for um, seafarers, again, um, in collaboration with uh, relevant government agencies such as the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Immigration, the Overseas uh, Administration, and um, even the Department of Justice was involved in crafting this uh, regulation which uh, was aimed um, to facilitate the, the repatriation of seafarers. Uh, it paved the way for more organized and synchronized crew change, not only in uh, the ports, but also at the airport. So as of um, September 15, a total of 55,000 seafarers were repat repatriated through um, our ports with the uh, 27 cruise ships and 1,860 cargo ships serviced um, at the port of Manila. Another measure adopted was uh, to come up with um, a policy that all permits that uh, expired during the quarantine periods are automatically uh, extended. Uh, first, it was extended until June 30, but since the containment uh, subsisted, it was uh, extended until September 30, and there is a possibility that this will be extended further until the end of the year, since the containment measures are still in place. And uh, it was also uh, provided in this policy that applications uh, received, uh, for example, a permit you applied for a permit to operate and uh, there was a lockdown, that application or the, um, the application will be considered as approved. And again, but for a shorter period, uh, which is um, uh, earlier, as uh, mentioned, uh, up to Gen 30, and uh, with uh, once approved, it will be valid until uh, the end of the year. It was also um, significant that the, inter, the international, no, the um, interagency task force on uh, emerging diseases, which uh, which is the national body, which is um, on top of this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic measures, has um, uh, classified port operations as essential service, and this uh, paved the way for the easing up of restrictions for the movements of. Uh, workers to and from the ports as well as uh, cargoes. The pandemic also pushed uh, forward the mandatory, mandatory online processing and payment of port use fees and terminal uh, handling and related charges, as well as payment of customs duties and taxes. Again, this uh, again this measure has highlighted the collaboration um, among different government agencies and the, the situation in fact has highlighted that um, uh, we can do more and we can do faster if, uh, if uh, given the circumstances and having common uh, objectives. So we, 
would like to share um, what the, the, the way uh, we want to move forward, what are the, uh, the things that uh, we will be um, doing. And some of this actually uh, we are already implementing, but we want to further highlight that uh, some of the, the, the measures that we are implementing now uh, will be carrying over uh, even beyond uh, or post uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So we have to uh, embrace uh, digitalization and uh, to leverage technology. We, are, we have in place already online recruitment uh, portal. Uh, this has been launched, uh, digitizing the agency's recruitment and uh, uh, application processes. We also look forward to um, online ticketing system. This has been launched and we hope to uh, fully implement it uh, before the end of the year. We also have contract tracing app, which is available to all um, uh, you, to all uh, visitors and workers at the port. We have been uh, we have started a reorganization before the pandemic, but um, while we will continue um, restructuring, definitely the um, the conditions existing now uh, will be uh, taken into account and will be very relevant in the direction that. Uh, the organization would like to proceed. Alternative work arrangements may not be um, possible or may not be that really that uh, popular then, but the situation has uh, made us realize that um, we can have alternative work arrangements that will be give us uh, also the same results, but uh, it will also uh, give us a savings. We will be pursuing new business activities. Actually, uh, it's more of um, uh, pursuing or um, strengthening the businesses that have uh, been uh, started during the pandemic. So crew chains hubs um, will, uh, will be pursued. Uh, at present, there are only three um, ports that are uh, allowed for crew change that is in Manila, in Bataan, and Subic. And there will be more ports that will be um, allowed to conduct crew change once they have the uh, necessary uh, training, the facilities, and the procedures. We have also, um, uh, what's this, uh, launch a molecular COVID-19 testing center in the ports. Um, it is in relation to our bid to facilitate the movement of um, the conduct of, um, uh, what's this, uh, crew change. Uh, this is also in relation to the creation of one-stop shop, uh, wherein um, RT-PCR testing booths, quarantine facilities, Anchorage application and customs, immigration and quarantine procedures uh, will, be, um, will be under one roof. We will also be uh, investing more uh, in human resource, online training. Um, we, we are uh, having um, consistently uh, availing, uh, giving our employees uh, to avail of this facility. We will be pursuing a collaboration with other port and maritime training institutions like uh, UNCTAD, for example. And um, the pandemic uh, gave us the opportunity to highlight our strengths and recognize the rooms for improvement. Uh, we benefited from collaborations and this definitely this will be sustained. We will continue to find ways to provide a safety net for port employees and workers who are uh, most vulnerable. At the same time, we have to uh, persuade our investors, shipping and uh, port users to bear some of the financial uh, pain, uh, no matter how unfair the equation operates. We will be continuously learn from best practices from our Asian um, neighbors, from global platforms. Um, from international fora and exchanges from the IMO, wherein uh, certainly the best there is, there is and uh, where we can benefit from a uh, menu of practical measures to keep our ports open. And definitely we need to continue to move forward, uh, to be future ready, uh, to be more flexible and resilient. Thank you so much for your uh, kind attention.